not only was it the biggest and the best, it had the best crew. E.J. Smith was its captain. He was going to retire after this voyage. He was an accomplished captain, probably one of the best of his day. He had to handpick his crew, best captain, best crew, best ship. What could go wrong? In fact, uh, he said that in his uh, assumption of the, his uh, summary of the, the Titanic when it was finished, he said you could literally cut it in half and both pieces would remain afloat. And some um, journalists at that time and other people were saying in print that even God himself could not sink that ship. It's just interesting to me that just a few days later, beginning April the 14th at 1140 at night when it hits the iceberg, to 3 a.m. on the 15th early mornings, the Titanic would hit an iceberg, would break in half, and in a matter of just over three hours would sink four miles to the bottom of the ocean. They say that when they made the ship that there, uh, when they, they were so sure that it wouldn't sink, that they did uh, no rehearsals on what would happen if the boat was going to sink, if there was any catastrophe. They didn't do any rehearsals with the crew. No instruction. They decided that they didn't need as many lifeboats, so they didn't have enough lifeboats for all of the people who were on board. And when the Titanic sunk out of the 2,200 passengers because of a failure of preparation, only 700 out of the 2,200 would live. They were so sure in their invincibility that they didn't have enough lifeboats and they did no training just in case something happened on the ship. When the, uh, oh, they, they, they have found records uh, that night, there was another ship nearby called the, the California, a United States ship called the California. It had stopped and anchored for the night and in fact, they saw the Titanic in the distance and signaled to it. And they communicated back and forth. And they said, uh, slow down, stop, deadly icebergs ahead. And they had a series of correspondence between the Titanic and the California. But the last response that was received from the Titanic to the California was this. Shut up. Leave us alone. Full steam ahead. Shut up, leave us alone, full steam ahead. They say that by the time they spotted the Titanic, the Titanic spotted the iceberg at its speed that it was going, and by the time that it had to respond, which was about 500 yards away, that they had a stopping time of roughly 37 seconds. So by the time they realized that they were in a dead, dead collision with a, an iceberg, they had given themselves a response time because of the speed at which they were navigating the icebergs of 37 seconds. And when they collided into the iceberg, um, the reality was nothing really should have happened. Actually, the hole that sunk the Titanic was only the size of a refrigerator, a normal refrigerator in our houses right now. It wasn't even that big. And there were 14 locked tight holes, containers, that water should have flooded into uh, in one of them. But the other ones were locked away so that water couldn't spread and sink the ship. So if, if multiple holes could have been put in and, and, and contained, and everything should have worked, but here's what they've discovered is that when they were building the ship, there were three million rivets bolts. And those bolts were made out of a lesser metal in order to save money. They were untested. And when they experienced cold water, they became brittle. And when the weight came, they lost their strength and snapped. And so now water began to flow into different parts of the ship. And actually, the ship began to break in half. And what was unsinkable now sunk. I mean, there's so many lessons to learn in this. But you have the naive, you have the fool, and you have the scoffer all in the story because what sunk the Titanic was foolishness. You, you naively 
had a lack of preparation. You assumed that you would have no accidents. And the leaders there didn't even bother doing lifeboats or preparation just in case. So everything they learned, they learned while the ship was sinking. That was naive, naivety. Then you have the fool. They were warned over and over again to stop and slow down, but they demanded their own way. Shut up, leave us alone, full steam ahead. And then lastly, uh, there was the scoffer. There were those, probably including the captain, who believed that even God himself couldn't sink this ship. There were levels of arrogance, but it was foolishness that sunk the Titanic. So 